Anabaptists. Reformers such as Luther had allowed the state to play an important, if not dominant, role in church affairs. However, some people strongly disliked giving such power to the state. These were radicals, known as the Anabaptists. To Anabaptists, the true Christian church was a voluntary community of adult believers who had undergone spiritual rebirth and had then been baptized. This belief in adult baptism separated Anabaptists from Catholics and Protestants who baptized infants. Anabaptists also believed in following the practices and the spirit of early Christianity. They considered all believers to be equal, a belief they based on the accounts of early Christian communities in the New Testament. Each Anabaptist church chose its own minister or spiritual leader. Because all Christians were considered priests, any member of the community was eligible to be a minister, though women were often excluded. Finally, most Anabaptists believed in the complete separation of church and state. Not only was government to be kept out of the realm of religion, it was not even supposed to have any political authority over real Christians. Anabaptists refused to hold political office or bear arms because many took literally the biblical commandment, Thou shalt not kill. Their political beliefs, as much as their religious beliefs, caused the Anabaptists to be regarded as dangerous radicals who threatened the very fabric of 16th century society. Indeed, the chief thing other Protestants and Catholics could agree on was the need to persecute Anabaptists. Reformation and Society During the political and religious turmoil of the Reformation, the lives of most women and Jewish people did not improve. Women were still subservient, and anti-Semitism continued. Women and Family The Protestants developed a new view of the family. Both monasticism and the requirement of celibacy for the clergy had been abolished. The family could now be placed at the center of life, and the mutual love between man and wife could be extolled. Were idea and reality the same, however? More often, Reality reflected the traditional roles of husband as the ruler and wife as the obedient servant. Luther stated it clearly, quote, The rule remains with the husband, and the wife is compelled to obey him by God's command. End quote. Obedience was not a woman's only role. Her other important duty was to bear children, which both Calvin and Luther saw as part of the divine plan. Anti-Semitism During the Reformation, anti-Semitism remained common in Northern Europe. Martin Luther expected Jews to convert to Lutheranism. When they resisted, Luther wrote that Jewish synagogues and houses should be destroyed. In the Papal States, Jews who would not convert to Christianity were segregated into ghettos. Catholic Reformation The Catholic Church also had a revitalization in the 16th century, giving it new strength and enabling it to regain much that it had lost to the Protestant Reformation. Three chief pillars, the Jesuits, reform of the papacy, and the Council of Trent, supported the Catholic Reformation. A Spanish nobleman, Ignatius of Loyola, founded the Society of Jesus known as the Jesuits. Loyola's small group of followers was recognized as a religious order by Pope Paul III in 1540. All Jesuits took a special vow of absolute obedience to the Pope, making them an important instrument for papal policy. Jesuits used education to spread their message. Jesuit missionaries were very successful in restoring Catholicism to parts of Germany and Eastern Europe, and in spreading it to other parts of the world. Reform of the papacy was another important factor in the Catholic Reformation. Participating in dubious financial transactions and Italian political and military affairs, the Renaissance popes had created many sources of corruption. It took the jolt of the Protestant Reformation to bring about serious reform. Pope Paul III perceived the need for change. 
He took the bold step of appointing a reform commission in 1537 to determine the church's ills. The commission blamed the church's problems on the pope's corrupt policies. Paul III also began the Council of Trent, another pillar of the Catholic Reformation. Beginning in March 1545, a group of cardinals, archbishops, bishops, abbots, and theologians met off and on for 18 years in the city of Trent, on the border between Germany and Italy. The final decrees of the Council of Trent reaffirmed traditional Catholic teachings in opposition to Protestant beliefs. Both faith and good works were declared necessary for salvation. The seven sacraments, the Catholic view of the Eucharist, and clerical celibacy were all upheld. Belief in purgatory and in the use of indulgences was strengthened, although the selling of indulgences was forbidden. The Roman Catholic Church now possessed a clear body of doctrine and was unified under the Pope's supreme leadership. Catholics were as well prepared as Calvinists to do battle for their faith.